Over 350,000 people would be dead before the Battle of Verdun was over, making this the longest and bloodiest battle in the First World War. Why was the Battle of Verdun such a big deal during World War I? Why did so many people die in a fight over a few miles of France that ultimately had little strategic impact on the war? Keep watching to find out more about the Battle of Verdun. World War I had been brewing for many years before it exploded onto the pages of history. The countries of Europe struggled with underlying tensions throughout much of the 1800s and early 1900s. By the time 1914 came along, every country had a plan for how they would win a hypothetical war against the other European countries. All they needed was an excuse. When you're looking for an excuse to start a fight, you can usually find one. In 1914, all the countries rolled out their war plans, confident that they would win the war within a year. However, by 1915, the war had ground to a near halt. Trenches became a staple of the fighting as it dragged on. Trenches weren't new to warfare. They had been used in earlier wars to gain ground and protect troops from enemy fire. Generals thought they could do the same thing again, but technology had changed so much that instead of being an offensive military technique, trenches became defensive during World War I. By the end of 1915, both sides were ready to break the stalemate. Although the French and their allies focused on the Somme, the Germans under the control of General Erich von Falkenhayn decided to break the deadlock at Verdun. Why would the Germans decide to fight their big stalemate-breaking battle at Verdun? Verdun is a very important city to the French. It has been a key army fortress since the Roman Empire. Whoever commanded Verdun had a huge military advantage, especially because the city was surrounded by both natural defenses, like mountains and ridges, and man-made defenses, like forts and bunkers for infantry. In 1916, the Germans decided to take a shot at Verdun because capturing it would give them a strong position in French territory, helping break the impasse and finally win the war. Of course, there were other towns and forts that the Germans could have captured. Some of them would have been much easier to take. But German Chief of General Staff Erich von Valkenheim knew Verdun's importance to the French. For instance, it had been the last city to fall in the Franco-Prussian War. Losing Verdun wouldn't just be a strategic loss, it would also be a huge blow to French morale. Von Falkenhayn thought he could lure the French into battling a war of attrition, thinking they would send as many men as they could to save this important city. In late January, the French got wind of what the Germans were doing. At first, it was brushed aside as a diversion, but they soon took it seriously. Since Verdun had not seen much action, much of its equipment and men had been moved elsewhere. They did not have much time to move supplies, soldiers, and materials to Verdun, some of which had been moved out not long before. Luckily for the French, they had a few extra days to prepare. The weather turned nasty, which postponed the German attack for nine days. However, this delay was not enough for the French to have any superior advantage by the time the Germans began their attack on Verdun on February 21, 1916. But how did the Battle of Verdun end up lasting 303 days? At first, it didn't look like the battle would last a week. The German forces began the battle on February 21st with a 10-hour artillery bombardment. The amount of artillery and the length of the assault were unprecedented in war. It was enough to drive people insane. The explosions ripped apart the ground and destroyed the landscape around Verdun, and the sound was so loud that it could be heard nearly 100 miles away. When the barrage finally stopped 10 hours later, the German forces thought the French would think the worst was over and showed themselves. Although the Germans made advances into French territory on that first day, they had to fight for every foot of it. This was the first sign of how long and tedious the Battle of Verdun would become. The second day was a repeat of the first. Unprecedented artillery bombardment and more French resistance against German incursions. Although the Germans were surprised the French were not running for safety, they were convinced that they had the superior firepower and would still beat the French quickly. They had advanced around three miles by the second day. By the third day, that prediction seemed to be coming true. The lengthy artillery barrages were throwing the French troops into panicked confusion. Military units were scattered across the French lines, and all forms of communication were down. Even messengers couldn't get where they needed to go. The Germans made huge advances into French territory that day capturing several forts around Verdun. 
It is estimated that the French lost 60% of their forces at Verdun within the first four days, as soldiers were ripped apart by the shrapnel or buried alive under collapsing trenches. By the fifth day of the battle, the Germans captured Douaumont, the largest fort of Verdun, without a shot being fired. The Germans celebrated their victory, and the French mourned this national disaster. It seemed at the moment that the Germans had already won the battle, but the tide of the battle turned. Once again, the weather was against the German troops. The ground had thawed, turning the destroyed countryside into a swamp. The heavy German artillery machines could no longer advance, leaving the German infantry too far out in front. Their march forward was halted on February 29th, just eight days after the battle had begun. Also, the French high command began to pay more attention to the fighting at Verdun. On February 24th, they decided to send General Philippe Pétain to defend Verdun at all costs. He had a reputation for being an excellent defense leader, so they had confidence that he would be able to defend the city. General Philippe Pétain began to move supplies and soldiers to Verdun along the Sacred Way, a road that connected Verdun to the nearest railway station 45 miles away. They had to keep the road in good shape, and despite the constant threats of German bombing, the Sacred Way proved essential to keeping the French in the fight throughout the Battle of Verdun. As February turned into March, the battle began falling apart for the Germans for several reasons. First, the Germans changed their plans in the middle of the battle, a move that has since been regarded as a bad one. But at the time, the Germans were losing far more soldiers than they had anticipated. The original plan was to take strategic forts around Verdun, but the French artillery was killing thousands of German troops. The Germans decided to switch their objective from taking strategic forts to taking any ground they could get. The plan was to take out the French artillery, but that was easier said than done. That led to the second reason the battle began to fall apart for the Germans. As they fought to take any ground they could, the French fought back to retake the ground the Germans were taking. The Germans would win a hill or a town, just to lose it a few days later. The third problem the Germans ran into was time. By March, they had lost the element of surprise that they desperately needed to win the Battle of Verdun quickly. The French were now more prepared. Although the Germans were still dealing heavy blows with their artillery, the French were starting to deal those blows right back. The back-and-forth nature of the battle soon fell into the typical pattern of all World War I matches, a bloody and rotting stalemate. By late March, the French had suffered almost 89,000 casualties, and the Germans had lost about 80,000. By late April, the Germans decided to return to their original strategy and push to take Verdun itself. By that time, though, it was too late for that original plan to be successful. Although they had hoped to draw the French into an emotional battle fueled by pride instead of reason, the Germans now had fallen into the same trap themselves. They had lost sight of the strategic importance of Verdun and were now fighting for honor. Neither side could step away without dishonoring themselves and their country and so the battle descended into what survivors called Hell on Earth. The near-constant artillery and the smell of rotting corpses were enough to drive nearly anyone crazy. The stench permeated everything, from the ground to the hair of the surviving soldiers. The summer heat and flies had arrived by June, making the trenches even more miserable. June also saw the last successful German push at the Battle of Verdun, but of course, they didn't know that at the time. When the Germans captured Fort Vu in June 1916, they thought only about how they had just secured another major victory. However, the war suddenly turned against the Germans just as they captured Fort Vu. The other Allied powers launched their summer attacks on other battlefields. The Russians initiated an assault in the east, and the British launched the Battle of the Somme. Both attacks forced the Germans to take note of the impending stalemate and begin directing troops away from the Battle of Verdun. Once the Battle of the Somme began, pressure was lifted off the French forces. Still, the fighting would continue for another six months. The Germans attempted to take Fort Suvi twice, but they were never successful. French machine guns halted them on the road leading up to the fort. The closest the Germans ever got to the city of Verdun was a ridge from which they could see the rooftops of the houses and the old church spire of the Verdun Cathedral. They never got any closer. In October, the French took an offensive position and began taking back forts they had lost earlier in the battle. On October 24th, they recaptured Douaumont. On November 2nd, they recaptured Fort Vaux. The final fight of the Battle of Verdun began on December 15th. The Germans started their artillery attack a few minutes too late, 
which allowed four French divisions to attack the German lines. By December 18th, the French had officially won the Battle of Verdun, but the cost of the battle was high. By the end of the battle, the French had lost about 377,000 soldiers to death and injury, and the Germans had lost 337,000 soldiers. German Chief of General Staff Erich von Falkenhayn had intended to ruin the French army, but he had not expected the huge German losses as well. The battle had a huge impact on the rest of World War I. The French army had taken so many casualties that the British military led the rest of the war, including the big push on the Western Front. The scars of the war can still be seen and felt today in France. People are still digging out 40 tons of unexploded artillery shells every year. The landscape around Verdun was forever scarred, and the people of France still remember Verdun as the bloodiest and most costly battle of World War I. To learn more about the Battle of Verdun, check out our book, The Battle of Verdun, a captivating guide to the longest and largest battle of World War I that took place on the Western Front between Germany and France. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.